In this video, we're going to be discussing logarithmic functions. First, we'll start by defining what a log is and the reason on why we need logarithms. Here's an easy example. If I give you an equation that is 2 to the x power equals 8, it's easy to see what x needs to be in order to make this equation come true. It's clear that 2 to the x power has to be 3 to become 8. So we can solve that x is 3. Same thing with this one over here. 3 to the what power is 9. Well, clearly x needs to be 2 because 3 squared is 9. However, how would we answer something like 2 to the what power is 3? Well, there is no integer that I could plug in for x in order to find that answer. I mean, I know 2 to the first power is 2, and I know 2 to the second power is 4, but what in between there will give me an answer of 3? Clearly my exponent is going to be, need to be some number in between 1 and 2, somewhere between 1 to 2, but what exactly would that x need to be in order to make this come exactly true. Well, in order to solve for any equation that has an x in the exponential field up here as the power, we need to use logarithms to solve for that. Certainly, we're going to define first what a logarithm is. By definition, y equals log base b of x. What that means, if we translate that into exponential form, we could simply just state that the b, which is the base, y is the exponent, and x is the value. This is an exponential form. This is in logarithmic form. And usually, if you cannot solve for one typical way, for example, if the ex exponent is your variable, then it sometimes helps to write it in logarithmic form, because then that exponent is on the side of the equal sign, and we can solve for everything on the right. So depending on what you're trying to solve for, it sometimes helps to write the exponential form in logarithmic form or vice versa. So let's go through the, par the parts in order to be able to go back and forth between these. Again, recognize that the base of the exponential form is the little base of the log. The exponent of the base becomes the exponent which is on the left-hand side of the logarithm, which is what we're, we'd eventually be trying to solve for. The last piece of information is the value. So the actual value, when you take a base to an exponent, the answer that you get is going to be the value of the logarithm. So pay close attention to where all of those pieces go when we translate between the two types of the forms so we can write them in the correct order. So let's start by practicing by changing from logarithmic form to exponential form in these examples. This is in logarithmic form. Let's remember that the base is b, the exponent is 4, and the value is x. So if I put all of that into the exponential form, it becomes the base 2 to the power of 4 equals the value. So the base 2 to the power of 4 equals the value of x. Let's do it again for this one. 
the base is 3, the exponent is x, and the value is 9. So when I write this in logarithmic form, I will have, or excuse me, when I write this in exponential form, I have base 3 to the exponent x equals the value of 9. Now these we could actually solve for. It's not asking me to do so, but I know what 2 to the 4th power is. It's 16, so 16 would equal x. In this case, I know what x would need to be. 3 to the squared power equals 9. We did that up here at the beginning. It's not asking me to solve. For now, we're just practicing writing these in exponential form. For part c, again, we see the base is 3 raised to the power of 4 equals the value of x. The base is x. The power is 2 equals the value of 1 ninth. We could also go the other direction. What if we start with exponential form and we're asked to write that in logarithmic form? So the same thing would apply here. This is the base, this is the exponent, and this is the value. So in logarithmic form, we always write this as the value equals log of the base of the value. Sorry, that is wrong. That is wrong. Let's try that again. All right. On the side is the exponent, which is 4. That's why I have this color coded. The color code says the exponent equals log base b of the value 16. That looks much better. Let's try this one more time. Okay, over here we have the base, which is 5. The exponent is 2, and the value is x. So when we write this in logarithmic form, which is up here, we start with the exponent equals log base of 5 of the value x. Let's try it again. Again, start with the exponent. So the exponent goes first. In this case, the exponent is x plus 1 equals log of the base of the value. Exponent equals log of the base of the value. Okay? So it takes practice putting these all in the right spots before you get the hang of where everything goes. Now, how do we solve these? Down here, in order to solve logarithmic expressions, first thing we always do is we set the expression equal to y. It doesn't really matter which variable you make it, but for now, let's just call it y. So if I wanted to solve log 2 of 8, log base 2 of 8, I say, okay, well, let me set that equal to some value, and we'll call it y, and we're trying to solve for y. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set this equal to y, and we're trying to solve for y. This I cannot put in my calculator, or at least I'm not going to. We're going to solve this without the calculator. So in order to solve this, now we're going to write this in exponential form. So we're going to take this base 2 with the exponent y of the value 8. And when we write this in exponential form, this becomes 2 to the power y equals 8. 
And now we can solve for this. I know what the value of y is going to be because 2 to the third power is 8. So I found the answer of log base 2 of 8 by putting it in exponential form. Another way we could have done that is how we learned in the previous section. We could have set both bases to be the same. So if I would have instead said 2 to the y power equals 2 to the what power, you could see that this is 8 is the same thing as 2 to the third power, and then their exponents are equal to each other. And that's where I came up with this answer. Now some calculators will have a log with a base of um, any number you'd like to put in as part of its function. This calculator has that particular function. So if I wanted to find log base 2 of 8, I could simply put that into my calculator. And you find that the answer is indeed 3. However, that doesn't work for all calculators. If you use a smaller scientific calculator, these will not have logs that you can change the base of. A general log, which is called a common log, actually only has a base of 10. So by default, when you use the log key on a more simple scientific calculator, it assumes that the base is 10. And you don't even see it here. It just assumes that the base is 10. So we wouldn't be able to calculate something like this in a general scientific calculator because it doesn't calculate logs of anything besides a base that is 10. This has a base of 2, so we wouldn't be able to calculate that in our calculator. We would have to do this longhand using algebra. Let's try another one. Over here I have log base 3 of 81. Well, first we set that equal to y, and we try to solve for y. Then we put this in exponential form. This says 3 to the y power is 81. Now if I use the rules that we did back in the previous section, I set the bases equal to each other. So this would be the same thing as saying 3 to the y equals 3 to the, well 81 is 3 to the fourth power. So that means y and 4 must be the same. 3 to the 4th power is indeed 81. Log base 36 of 6, we could simplify by putting it in exponential form as well. So first let's set it equal to y. So then if I write this in exponential form, I have 36 to the y power equals 6. So then we could write this in exponential form. Well, 36 is the same thing as 6 squared. When I raise a power to a power, I can multiply those two powers together. So then their powers must be equal to each other. This is 6 to the first power, where this is 6 to the 2y power. So I can set their powers equal to each other. So that means y must be 1 half. For part d, again, let's set the whole thing equal to y and put it in exponential form. So 4 to the y power equals 1 over 64. Well, let's write these both in terms of 4. 4 to the what power is 1 over 64? Well, I know 4 to the third power is 64, but how do I make it 1 over 64? I make it to the negative third power. So that means y must be negative 3.
Let's try these down here. Part E. 5 to the what power equals 1? Anything raised to the 0 power is 1. So I know y is 0. Five to the what power is one over one hundred twenty five? Well, let's set the bases equal to each other. So five to the what power equals five to the well, I know five to the third power is one hundred twenty five, but if I want one over one hundred twenty five, I'm going to make that to the negative third power. So this means y must be negative 3. So we're able to solve four exponents that have integers as its answer. However, sometimes it's a little more difficult when you're solving for those particular answers of logs when they're not exact integers or they might be decimals. So we will come up with other ways for solving. So let's find the exact value of the following. Let's do some more examples. This says 4, if I put this equal to y, this says 4 to the what power equals 0. That can never happen. There is no solution that is impossible. There is no power that you could ever plug in there that will turn 4 into 0. Remember, the 0 power, 4 to the 0 power makes it 1. There is no way to turn that into 0, no matter what exponent you put in there. How about this one over here? We have log base 4 of 1 16th. So this is saying 4 to the y power equals 1 16th. 4 to the what power is 1 16th. So we're going to set both of these powers. I'm going to do it up here. I'm running out of room. So this says 4 to the y power equals 4 to the negative 1 half, one, excuse me, negative squared power because this is 4 squared, and since it's in the denominator, the den that means the exponent must be negative. So this means y must be negative 2. So the answer to this is negative 2. This one states 4 to the what power equals 1 fourth. Well, if I put them both in terms of 4, this is 4 to the negative 1. So that means y must be negative 1. 4 to the what power is 1? 4 to the what power is 1? By definition, y must be 0. 4 to the what power is 4? Well, obviously, it's going to have to be to the first power. So y is 1. 4 to the what power is 16. Well, 4 to the y, 16 is the same thing as 4 squared, so that means y must be 2. So we're able to solve for multiple logarithms. This time we're going to look at what it looks like as a graph. If we look at the graph of a logarithm function, we first find a table of values. Here we've got y equals log base 4 of x. So if I used 1 16th for x, 
This says y equals log base 4 of 1 over 16. Well, we actually did that up here already. This says 4 to the what power is 1 16th? The answer is negative 2. So we're going to have a point at 1 16th, negative 2. So that point is going to be at 1 16th, negative 2. Our next point, y equals log base 4 of 1 fourth. Well, we actually did that up here. That value is equal to negative 1. So 1 fourth, negative 1. I have that in the wrong spot. Uh, 1 16th, one negative 2 is down here. Sorry about that. Okay. Next we have y equals log base 4 of 1. Well, we did that one up here. That's 0. So 1, 0 is a point on my graph. y equals log base 4 of 4. We did that one up here. That answer is 1. y equals log base 4 of 16. We found that answer up here. The answer is 2. So 16, 2. So it's like way, 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 way over here. So you can see that this graph looks like this. And it's going to have an asymptote since x, since this value of x, can never be 0 because it'll have no solution, that means it will never touch this axis right here. Okay, so it actually will have a asymptote, a vertical asymptote, right here on the y-axis, because x can never be zero. Because you can't take log of any base of zero, because that is stating that, that base to an exponent is going to equal zero, and that can never happen. So there will be a vertical asymptote there. Now, could we put in some negative values? Let's go over here and let's do a, an extra table. And on the other side, let's find some negative values. Okay, so for example, if I plug in um, a negative uh, 2 for x, negative 2 for x, if I plug in a negative 2 for x, this means I have y equals log base 4 of negative 2, which is saying 4 to the what power is negative 2 it is impossible to ever make a positive base equal a negative number. Even if you put negative exponents in for the exponential field, you will never get a negative answer. A negative exponent simply just makes this number smaller. You can never get a negative answer, therefore you will never get anything on the left side of this graph. Now, however, we can graph the exponential graph on the same grid. So if we look at the same grid down here, we've already gotten the graph of the log function. Now we're going to graph the exponential function on the same graph. I will do this one in red so we can see the difference between the two. So if we graph this exponential graph down here, let's make a table of values. Okay, if I plug in an x of negative 2, 4 to the negative 2 power is 1 16th. 4 to the negative 1 power is 1 fourth. 4 to the 0 power is 1. 
4 to the first power is 4. 4 to the second power is 16. So that's way up there. So you can see that I'm going to have a graph of the exponential function. It's going to look like this, where it has an asymptote along the horizontal axis. Now what do you notice about these two graphs? If I were to draw this line of symmetry down the middle of y equals x, recall what we said about inverses in the previous section. If you have an inverse, it will be symmetric from one side of the symmetry line to the other side of the symmetry line of y equals x. And you can see that the logarithmic function and the exponential function are inverses of each other. And that was obvious from the very first page when we, de when we defined logarithmic and exponential functions because you can rewrite both as the other. So if you're trying to solve for something in exponential, you can undo the exponential form and write it in logarithmic form, since it's the inverse. If you have something in logarithmic form and you need to solve it, you can undo the logarithmic form by writing it in exponential form. So since they are inverses of each other, they are going to be symmetric over the y equals x oblique line. There are certain characteristics of the logarithmic function. So the logarithmic function, remember, was the one in black. Characteristics of that logarithmic function has an x-intercept that's always going to be located at 1, 0. It will have a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. That's this green dotted line. It is increasing. It has a domain that goes from 0 to infinity and it has a range of all real numbers. It is one-to-one -one because it does pass the horizontal line test. And its inverse is the exponential function, which we discussed in the previous section in 6.3. You could see all the characteristics of exponential functions back in that video. So let's try graphing another one. This one, this time we graphed the logarithmic function that had a base of 4, which is a number bigger than 1. But what if we graph something that had a, a base that is smaller than 1 or is a fraction? Let's see how that graph will change. Here we've got a graph of log of base 1 fourth of x, and we're going to set it equal to y. So let's complete the table below. So we will graph the logarithmic function, and then we will also finish by graphing its inverse on the same set of axes. So the logarithmic function, if I put in x, which is 16 in for x here, I get y equals log of base 1 fourth of 16. If I were to rewrite this, in exponential form, this becomes 1 fourth to the y power equals 16. Well, that would mean this 4 would have to be negative 2. So I'll have a point at 16, negative 2, which is going to be like way down here. Let's try again. If 4 is x, that is states 1 fourth to the y power equals 4. Clearly y would need to be negative 1. So I'll have a point at 4, negative 1. 1 fourth to the y power equals x, which in this case is 1. Well, the only way to get 1 as an answer is if y is 0. If x is 1 fourth, we have 1 fourth to the y power equals 1 fourth. Clearly, y would have to be 1.
1 fourth to the y power is equal to x. In this case, x is 1 sixteenth. So y would have to be 2. So the graph of my logarithmic function would look like this. So I'm going to have a vertical asymptote here on the y-axis, which is the line x equals 0. Now let's go ahead and graph the exponential inverse. If I quick draw a little grid over here, and we'll put some values in here. If x is negative 2, 1 fourth to the negative 2 power is 16. It's like way up there. Negative, excuse me, 1 fourth to the negative 1 is going to be 4. 1 fourth to the 0 power is 1. 1 fourth to the first power is 1 fourth. 1 fourth to the second power is 1 over 16. So you see that this graph looks like this. And it has an asymptote on the horizontal. And if I drew my line of symmetry, you can see that these are indeed going to be inverses of each other because the red graph is symmetric from the black graph. And here, same thing, red graph and black graph are symmetric over that line. So let's just talk about some of the characteristics and finish up by doing a few last examples. So characteristics of the logarithmic function when the base is a fraction, the only difference when that a is less than 1 is that it is decreasing, which you can tell by the graph that this is decreasing. See this graph, this black graph here? It's decreasing instead of increasing this time. Also, the inverse is going to be y equals 1 fourth to the x, which is the exponential function. The domain of the logarithmic function will equal the range of the exponential function, which is from 0 to infinity. The range of the logarithmic function equals the domain of the exponential function, which is all real numbers. Remember, that is always true of all inverses. Since the domain is positive, the domain of the function, of the logarithmic function, is all x for where g of x is going to be greater than 0. So that would mean this value, whatever is in here, the value, has to be greater than 0. In other words, we can never take log of any negative number because you will always get an error message. For example, if I try taking log base something of a negative number, it just gives me an error message. It just says non-real answer. So the number in here will always have to be positive. If you noticed in our graphs, when we did our gra graphs, the log function, this black graph, never crossed over onto the negative side because you can't have a graph over here. x cannot be negative. You can never have a negative value for the, for the logarithm. So let's find the domain of these two logarithmic functions. Well, we know that everything in the value field has to be positive. Since all of this has to be positive, we say x must be greater 
than 5. So the domain is all of real numbers 5 to infinity. Same thing here. x to the third power has to be positive. So that means if I took the cubed root of both sides, x is greater than 0. So the domain would be all real numbers between 0 to infinity. So let's finish by solving these last four questions. Solve by changing to exponential form. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to change to exponential form. So this is 4 squared equals the value x minus 2. So now we can solve. 16 equals x minus 2, and if I add 2, I get x is 18. Over here, 6 to the 5x plus 3 power equals 36. Now if we can get these bases to match, I can solve for this. 6 to the what power is 36? Well, squared. Once they match, I can set their exponents equal to each other and solve. Subtract 3 and divide by 5. Two to the negative three power equals eight to the x power. Let's get the bases to match. Two to the negative third equals two to the what power? Well, eight is two to the third power raised to the x power. And when we have a power raised to a power, we multiply those together. Oops. Like so. Now that the bases match, 2 and 2, I can set their exponents. These exponents will be equal to each other. So that means negative 3 equals 3x. And when I divide by 3, I get x is negative 1. One last time. 3 to the negative 1 power equals 3 to the x power. Oh, this is pretty simple. They already have the same bases, so therefore negative 1 must be x.